take great pride in when you come here, uh, not only growing on the football field, but growing off the football field, um, you know, and spiritually as part of that, and not only with our men, uh, but also our coaches. I serve as the team chaplain for the North Texas football team. Uh, this will be my third season with the team. So a team chaplain uh, is responsible for the character and spiritual development of the team. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Yeah, it's our weekly Bible study, you know, on game day, our pregame chapel. So on game day, um, I normally wake up, I spend time with the team. As they're doing their walkthrough, I go back to my hotel and I just really begin to start um, just thinking through and preparing more in detail what I want to say and what I want to communicate. Brothers, I got one verse for you um, to really lead out our time, and I hope that this verse will really compel you to think deeply about the task at hand. He's pretty mild, like he's cool, laid-back guy, but in his services, he's, he really gets your blood boiling. Luke chapter 12, beginning in verse 48, says this, Too much is given, much will be required. I try to make my chapel services um, both helpful for what they're going to enter into for the game. And so I want it to be applicable uh, for the game that they'll play. Um, but I also want it to be applicable for them in life. Whenever someone receives uh, an opportunity to make much of the gifts that they have, there will be required from that person a lot of things. Too much is given, much is required. When you're speaking to a bunch of football players, to some extent, they need to be entertained 24-7. And to go up there and to just give a, you know, a sermon without energy, without voice inflection, without, you know, being demonstrative, I think that honestly, regardless of how good the message would be, you would probably lose their attention. Secondly, brothers, the, the one thing that I love about Jesus Christ and respect and admire about him is the, the reality that Jesus Christ was always willing to be the target. Brothers, you accomplished something last week. You've accomplished something the last few weeks. You've accomplished something over the last year and a half that has put a target on your back. I would compare it to like, like one of those pregame speeches that a coach gives, but like he adds his like little biblical twist to it. Let's be clear. You guys are officially a target and they will stop at nothing to see you fall and to see you fail. The question that you will now have to ask yourself now, today, is how will you respond to being a target? Being the very team that everyone is out to get. And then you taking it up, you taking it up uh, yeah. about 50 yards, touch that, and then you're doing a... Yeah. Now what is this? What's, what's that? That's scary. John taught me that. Log in. Log in. Log in. Wow. One of the most notable men that I probably have had the most smallers with has been Rico Bussey. He had no spiritual background, um, had real no spiritual uh, influences in his life. Like every Tuesday we'll go eat at like Rosa's or something and he'll just teach me little things about the Bible and stuff. What does that verse mean for you? It just, it just helps you know like no matter how far you've been in life, like it's never too late. Over about two years or so, uh, me and Rico have just been walking through uh, what it means to know God and what it means to have a relationship with Him. Taught me just what it means to be a Christian, mostly. And now he's trying to teach me like how to actually do it, you know what I mean? Like how to live it. As the team views me and as players view me, um, they don't kind of put me in the box of me being this older guy that they can't relate to. They see a guy that is around the same age as them to some degree, maybe a very familiar background, and because of that, I think they naturally gravitate to me. And not only does he bring great leadership and great mentorship uh, within our faith, uh, but also the energy he brings. Uh, North Texas, just the university, is very near and dear to my heart. So I was a student here in North Texas from 2007 uh, to 2011. I remember back when I was in school where I can count on one hand how many games we won in my four years of being here. And so seeing uh, the change over the last decade or so uh, of this team uh, really being a team that you can get excited about is really exciting to think through. Um, and so I kind of see my fandom come out even on the sideline. WC is a guy that is, is so full of energy and full of life and you just notice what a strong spirit he has. He's always cracking jokes. You'll typically hear him say a lot if he sees you, my guy, my guy, my guy, my guy. He's a big Christian, you know what I mean? And I feel like he's the first person I've seen that actually personifies what it should be. Seeing him 
doing all the dances, the swag surfing. You'll see him over there dabbing a little bit. It just gets not only just, just the team, but it gets the crowd hype. I'm definitely the, the team chaplain that brings some spiritual momentum, but I'm also the hype man. And it's something that, you know, he tries to pass on to you when you're with him. He has as much fun as anybody on that field on Saturdays. Part of it's being the most excited team to play, and he definitely does his job on Saturday of being the most excited team. This season, keep your stories interessante, like Dos Equis, the beer whose label inspired the greatest comeback in history. Authentic Mexican cerveza. 4.2% alcohol by volume. One gram protein, zero gram fat. Yeah, total coach. 12 fluid ounces. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. Now open daily, Epic Waters Indoor Water Park is epic in every wave. With 11 slides and attractions under a colossal retractable roof, Epic Waters Indoor Water Park is fun for the whole family, year-round, rain or shine. Buy your tickets at EpicWatersGP.com. Everybody sees what goes on on the field on game day. What they don't realize is what goes on behind the scenes is extremely important to the success of this program. Between the equipment room, the training room, the, the strength staff, those people have as much of an impact on our players as we do as coaches. So when we had a vacancy in the uh, athletic training room, we really wanted to get someone who was a great communicator uh, and who really cared about kids. And, and ultimately, Jeff uh, surfaced to the top. Jeff's always a, a positive, upbeat guy. He does a great job of diagnosing our injuries. He doesn't just tell us what he thinks is wrong. He tells us what's wrong, why it's wrong, what may, what we did wrong, you know what I mean? And he's, he's kind of like a, a technician in a sense. You know, a lot, lot of our players take a lot of trauma throughout the throughout a game. And it, it starts almost right after the game in terms of making sure they're getting hydration, nutrition, getting into the ice baths on Saturdays and Sundays. Woo! Cold, boy, I tell you. But I feel like that when you hit the three minute mark, everything just goes numb, so you're good. And then once you, like, once you get out, that's the worst part. Yeah, you're just freezing. Yeah, you're freezing. And so everyone just sprints to get inside and try to get warm trying to just minimize the amount of kind of trauma and try to speed up the recovery process. And for us, it's a, it's a seven day a week process with our players to try to keep these guys on the field. You know, as coaches, you have to evolve every year. The game changes. He does a great job in his profession of also staying ahead of the curve because there's always newer ways or different ways to treat certain injuries, um, newer methods, things that are maybe a little bit out of the box. Since the beginning is, you know, we, we've always done ice and heats and whirlpools and ankle taping. And while we certainly still do a lot of that, our roles have certainly expanded in terms of, you know, added recovery and, and working with our nutritionist and, and partnering with our strength conditioning for extra flexibility, rehabilitation services. You know, we've added some more kind of holistic approaches, you know, things like acupuncture and dry needling. We have our primary care sports medicine physicians who are osteo osteopathic physicians. They are in three days a week. We also have our chiropractic services in uh, three days a week. We have physical therapy in four days a week, and then we also have our occupational therapy services in four days a week as well. So we've certainly added a lot of different approaches to try to give our student athletes as many different ways to try to get healthy and recover throughout the week as we can. So it's fun to go in our training room because you never know what you're going to see. I mean, you may walk in and, and there's somebody getting acupuncture. I always volunteer to put the needles in. No one ever allows me to do that. I remember one time when I pulled my hamstring, Jeff told me, he was like, you know, look, I can do this acupuncture on your hamstring. It's gonna relieve a lot of tension in my hamstring. And I was really skeptical about it because I don't like needles. The purpose of those is increasing blood flow. Uh, we obviously know that uh, the blood has a lot of uh, healing properties within it. And that is one of the things that the, the acupuncture does. They introduced me to cupping, I think, uh, when I first got here, my freshman year. You have these little cups and I get it on my hamstrings. And they place it on there and they have this little suction machine where it sucks up the air, the air all in the cup and then like kind of pushes your skin up, relieves some of the soreness or some of the, the lactic acid within my hamstring and 
I do that on my hamstrings, my quads, my back. In my opinion, the cupping always makes my arm feel fresh uh, every time. It's okay to say I put you on. <laughs> Feels amazing. Uh -huh. There's so much that goes into it. Now, it's not only in the training room, getting the proper treatment and, and making sure that, you know, those little, those little lakes and bruises can turn into something bigger if, uh, you know, you don't do the right things uh, by getting in the training room and, and getting the, the treatment that you need. Past years, I never used to go in there. I used to think I was Superman. I'm not gonna lie to you, but now that I'm getting older and my body's starting, I'm starting to feel a lot more things. I go in there and literally get treatment every single day. I'm a smaller guy, everybody knows that. So, uh, I mean, taking hits by 250 pound guys, 300 pound guys will take a toll on you. It also kind of tricks you a little bit because it starts to get cool outside. So a lot of people kind of stop hydrating as much. Get your body right, man, get your body right. Stop eating the right foods and it can really take a toll on you on the field if you're not careful. You know, if you're feeling fine, that doesn't mean that, you know, your body's not wearing down. You gotta be feeling like you did the first day you stepped on fall camp. And that's what I try to strive for every single day throughout the week. If I'm not feeling fresh, then I'm not gonna be the best player I can be for this team to, to help win games. There's no doubt that Jeff and our medical staff do an unbelievable job, not only making sure that our guys are getting the proper treatment to get them back out on the field, but also building relationships. And I think that's as important as anything with the trust. There's certain types of players that for lack of a better word, will lie to you. You have some of those players that the only way they would leave the field is if they had a body part amputated. And so they'll tell you they feel fine, that they feel good, that they're okay when they're really not. And it's it's up to, to Jeff and his staff to diagnose. You feeling okay? Yeah. No problem. Good. Good. A lot of our players are coming from programs that maybe don't have athletic trainers, don't have access to sports medicine care. So for those players, sometimes it does take a little bit of understanding how the body works and how the game takes a toll on the body and what we can do between our sports medicine services, the nutrition, our, our weight room, and how all of us work together uh, to try to maintain their bodies. It all goes hand in hand. Uh, you know, your th preparation throughout the week, we talk about X's and O's and scheme. Uh, but that's as big as anything, just making sure that your bodies are right by Saturday. And game day tomorrow, you know what I mean? Go mean green. <laughs> what do you call a great beer with more taste, only 96 calories, and 3.2 carbs? We call it Miller Lite. What are you holding? Miller Lite. Hold true. Open daily, Epic Waters Indoor Water Park is epic in every wave. With 11 slides and attractions under a colossal retractable roof, Epic Waters Indoor Water Park is fun for the whole family, year-round, rain or shine. Buy your tickets at EpicWatersGP.com. This season, keep your stories interessante, like Dos Equis, the beer whose label inspired the greatest comeback in history. Authentic Mexican cerveza. 4.2% alcohol by volume. One gram protein, zero gram fat. Yeah, total cold. 12 fluid ounces. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. One thing I got for you is this. Turn it loose and attack for four quarters. All three phases, selfless, tough, and disciplined. Ref. Hey, offense, listen to me. All right? The toughest time we have every week, I'm talking about even game day, is that 10 minutes we got to go against your ass in Tuesdays, pass scale, and one-on-ones. Because of who you are and because of what you do. So go out there today, run by them, and run through them. Go be you, because you do it better than anybody in the country. You understand? Yes, Defense, be the reason. Since day one, be the reason. Be the reason we win, because we get takeaways, we give the offense great field position, we score on defense, we don't let them score. Special teams, you gonna talk it like you walk it? Huh? You gonna talk it like you walk it? You talk elite, you gonna be elite. It's gonna be a beat down. Four 
Norman Field at Ballard Stadium in the second meeting all time between North Texas and the Old Dominion University Monarchs. Oh, let's go, baby, let's go! Come on, on second down and 10, two receivers come to the left side. Monarchs going right to left in the first quarter. Snap back, and LaRusa has time. Delivers at a diving interception by Kimon Hall at the 43 yard line. Great job right there. Great job. Great job. Great job. Nice job. Let's go. Let's go. Nick Smith now in the backfield, goes in motion, takes a swing pass in the left flat. Makes the first man miss inside the 40, down near the 35-yard line. Third and three, ninth play of this opening possession. And Fine will look to throw, has time, throws one deep to the end zone, caught, touchdown! Hey, great job, great job. Hey, that cover two good on the home side, cover two. Yeah, yeah, Making that stick a little quicker. Yeah. That's a great yeah, job, great I, drive. I, I, uh, I hitched to it. Yeah. I mean, left, right, though, I see you guys on the half. But Mike still got good uh, spacing over there, yeah. so he saved me. Yeah. Third down and nine. LaRusa will drop back. And be sacked back inside the 40 by Hamilton. There's a nice recovery. I see you, Boo! I see you, Boo! No, no, just run your feet. You reach? Yeah, you just run your feet. You run your feet. I know, you didn't run your feet. Hey, look, look, what I tell you? You hit the reset button, you hit the reset button, right? You come back, you make a play. And so third down and one. From the 37, they stay in the pistol. The handoff up the middle of burst goes Torrey. Goodbye, 2010 touchdown. Hey, great job, great job, great job, great job. Keep it going. Hey, I way to run that rock, baby. Good job, man. Hey, hey, good job on that Derek Dove. What uh, we, he went the wrong way? No. We, so we were, I was confused from the get go. And so we were arguing. Yeah. And then they, I looked over, they're yelling at me. I just see Derek. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. And I forgot to tell the lineman. Just we switched it from Dublin to Derek. To the right of Fine, claps his hands, has the snap, fakes the handoff, throws complete, caught by Guyton inside the 10, fights his way down to the 7. Three receivers left, Guyton by himself right, short side of the field. Torrey is the running back, and takes the handoff, there's a burst inside the 5, breaks a tackle into the end zone again. DeAndre Torrey, second touchdown, and it's 20 to nothing. Hey, why you look like me out there in that field? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just need two more. Get that for me. Fulgham has uh, all but one of the completions from LaRusa from his 48. Play action fake, tossed to the right flat, and Duard finally makes a catch and is leveled by Nate Brooks. The opposite number nines matched up there. So they'll go for it on fourth down at four. Snap back for LaRusa. Will fire one deep up the left sideline and incomplete. Hey, listen. Hey, the difference. He gets the same route you did. Pads were down, clean break. You're up high, rounded it, ball hung. Come on now, focus on the fundamentals. That's going to win it for us right there. That's going to be the difference right there. On fourth and five from the Monarch, 26. Nick Smith in the backfield. Now motion out of the backfield. Fine throws, guns it over the middle. Caught Bussy inside the 15, 10 all the way. Touchdown. And the lead is 28 nothing. Great job up front. Great job up front. We're going, Marty. We're going. We're going hey, man. hell of a job. Good job up front. Good job. Good job. Good job. Monarchs from their 36 with 3.43 to go in the half. Lala Davis is the running back. Fake to him. LaRusa drops back and lets one go deep. Caught by Fulgham. 30, 20, 15. Angles inside the 10. Hall slings him down. And hand it off, and Davis leaps over the pile and into the end zone for a touchdown to the Monarchs are on the board. Yeah, he scrambled, he scrambled really though. Huh? He scrambled. He scrambled? Yeah. 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 Keegan Brewer steps up, it's a fake, and they snap it to the up back, and he will have the first down up to the 40-yard line. So this will set up a field goal try of 48 yards. Nick Rice has made seven straight after he started the season, just three out of seven. Angle left to right from the far hash out of the hold of Bailey Kate. Good snap and hold. 
has it on the way wind at his back and it is good. And that's how the first half ends. Now open daily, Epic Waters Indoor Water Park is epic in every wave. With 11 slides and attractions under a colossal retractable roof, Epic Waters Indoor Water Park is fun for the whole family, year-round, rain or shine. Buy your tickets at epicwatersgp.com. This season, keep your stories interessante, like Dos Equis, the beer whose label inspired the greatest comeback in history. Authentic Mexican cerveza. 4.2% alcohol by volume. One gram protein, zero gram fat. Yeah, total coach. 12 fluid ounces. Dos Equis, keep it interessante. some point in time they're gonna start listening to me when i tell you something's coming all right they ran the speed option on second and four they came back at another second and four we ran a blitz right into it all right they threw three out routes on us i told you before leaving the sideline they're gonna get an out and up because they need to get on the board quick listen to me all right you can't be greedy you can't be selfish you just gotta do your job there's nothing wrong with the catch tackle that's the only play. They got one play on us the whole first half. One play. One play the whole first half. We got to go into the second half now. First thing is regain our composure. Forget all this other stuff that's going on. And you understand, we are going to have to get a great pass rush. And we are going to have to do a great job in coverage because if we go down and score and the game stays as it is, they are going to have to try to throw the ball to win. Which means we have to be great fundamentally. We have to be great with our eyes. We have to be relentless with our pass rush. Should be a zero on the damn board right now. We let our composure give them 15 yards at the end that converted to a field goal. This game ain't over by any means at all. Do you understand that? You don't relax for one second. All right, listen, man. Finish what you started. Right here, finish what you started. All right, come out in the second half and make sure we dominate the eight. That's the first and foremost. We get the ball first, all right, take it down. Put points on the board defensively. Keep doing what you're doing over and over and over. They've made one play, all right? Make sure we continue to dominate on all three sides of the uh, phases. Keep having fun, all right? And let's go dominate this team. Let's make sure we finish it off what we started in the second half. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Keep your composure, man. Keep your composure. Do your job. Play for the guy to the left and right. Let's go finish this game off right now. Hey, bring that in. Yeah, let's go, man. Let's go. Get out there. Get out Old Dominion after trailing 28 to nothing. They got the final 10 points of the half. Third and 10. Long count by La Russa has it and gets rid of it to the far sideline and caught for a touchdown by Fulgham. Let's go. Let's go. We're all right. Let's go. We got you. Let's go, baby, let's go! <laughs> let's go. I told you, it's a fundamental game back there today. It's a fundamental game back there today. They ain't gonna run the ball, you understand? So third and four. And Fine has it, looks that way. Now has to roll right, may have to keep, still looking to throw. Pulls up, throws, and it's batted down by Garner. Boy, he could have intercepted that. Back on the field, the field goal unit. This will be 35. The left to right angle. Shanbor puts this one down and Headland boots it through. Me. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Keep it up. You dominate. So third down and two for the first down, four for the touchdown. Might be final play, third quarter. Five seconds. Snap back, play fake. Fade, thrown to the corner of the end zone and caught for a touchdown by Duhart. We gotta make some plays in cover. You gotta be in position, you gotta go up, you gotta fight for the ball, you gotta pull the arms down. You try to go up for a ball, you got a 6 3, you're gonna lose that battle every time. Pull his arms down. You know the technique we use. Trying to add to a 31 24 lead early in the fourth quarter. First down to the 34 of the Monarchs and the handoff for Tory. 
And as he slung down by Garner, the ball is knocked free, and the Monarchs come up with the recovery. So, ready to go. Third and goal from the one. 18 seconds remaining, down 31-27. Same formation. La Russa turns, gives, and Davis into the end zone, untouched, standing up. The Monarchs take the lead with 15 seconds remaining. A chance if you can get somehow within field goal range. Three defenders all the way back at the 25. This snap from the 29 and a quick toss to the left sideline, up the sideline, and running out of bounds is Bussy with five seconds remaining. And uh, Johnson is the running back now. Evan Johnson on the field, first time. Snap back for fine, quick toss to the left flat and up the sideline, stepping out of bounds at the 50 with one second remaining is Bussy. 53 yards to travel. Mason Fine steps back. Now forced to roll. Rolling, rolling. He'll be sacked, and that's the game. And the Monarchs race onto the field to celebrate an amazing comeback from 28 nothing down. They have beaten the Mean Green 34-31.